What about this notion of, well, we are not doing enough in the never forget realm when it comes to nuclear annihilation or just devastation? Not, I don't think the world, the world will go on just fine. I mean, there'll be a planet here, but life. And well, Sorry, when you say that, there will be a sphere here. There will be life forms. There will be cockroaches and, and, and uh, tardigrades. tardigrades. <laughs> See, I know where you're going because we always have the same Hashtag conversation. Hashtag tardigrades, yeah. Um, but tell me, what could, what could we do to – and then obviously my follow-up question is going to be, was there an analog for COVID? I've changed my mind about this. Uh, I called it about as cleanly as somebody can call it, and then it happened. And then we denied that it was coming out of the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And we're also denying that we are trying to corner a conventional enemy who also possesses unconventional weapons, which, pardon my French, but this is just the dumbest thing I can imagine. All the same people who said that Putin would never invade Ukraine uh, are, are right here telling us exactly why this is safe, which it isn't. We are, this is the end. We're on borrowed time and we're not going to avoid this. We don't have the right leaders, you know, this just doesn't make any sense. And the reason it doesn't make any sense is because people need to be so proximate to the problem that it plays on their mind and they can't think about anything else. And um, so let's assume for the moment that uh, this is some sort of biological weapons convention workaround um, that may have spilled over through a wet market or something like that. And then we're in Ukraine and we're not allowed uh, to question why we are going to higher and higher levels of escalation. Now, I don't know about you, but almost all of my ancestors came from Ukraine. And if you ask Jews, Ashkenazi Jews, uh, about where they came from in that region, they used to say, they usually say something like the following. Well, it's a little region that sometimes was Poland, Poland. and sometimes it was Lithuania, <laughs> and sometimes it was Ukraine, and sometimes it was Russia, and sometimes it was Belarus. We cannot afford to have these borders oscillate as they have always oscillated. In fact, they didn't oscillate. If you look at a time lapse, much after World War II, up until the fall of the Berlin Wall because of the specter of nuclear uh, annihilation. And I will point out that uh, Teller famously came from the, I think the Lutheran Gymnasium in Budapest with uh, Laszlo Ratz as his high school math teacher. And Szilard. And, and, uh, and with Zillard and, and von Neumann and like, the, the world's greatest <laughs> secondary high school. <laughs> high school, the world's greatest high school no, JV team. Yeah. Give it up for the Lutheran community. <laughs> and then um, Stan Ulam came from a town which I'm now forced to call Lviv, which I think I, I always grew up saying something closer to Lvov. And that is a Polish town in eastern, like northeastern Ukraine, where we're fighting. Ukrainians are fighting like eight seconds by hypersonic missile to the border in Poland. So I'm, I'm not supposed to say I called it, but we're insane. I mean, just the twin nuclei problem within the space of the time that I was talking about it, we're facing potential absolute cataclysms. And, you know, we're now funding more EcoHealth Alliance. We're, 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 we're trying to figure out if we should be sending planes after sending tanks into Ukraine, we're not supposed to discuss it. Nobody knows what's going on. Um, I don't know what we're doing, but I do know that we're playing Russian roulette and we're not going to be surviving this if we keep playing this every time somebody wants to change a border in Central and Eastern Europe. And just you know, lingering on that one one moment longer, thinking about in our community, in the Jewish community, every single Jewish community, San Diego, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., there is some tribute to the Holocaust or, you know, there's some a memorial to the Holocaust, uh, bigger ones, smaller ones, you know, Washington DC and LA are two notable ones. And then of course in Israel at Yad Vashem, um, I, I was thinking of, you know, kind of getting your take on it. We don't have, we have one Hir Hiroshima and there's one Nagasaki and there's, those are the two places. There's, there's places. I mean, here in San Diego, we actually have a peace garden and then in Japanese, but there's nothing as visceral as uh, uh, if you've been to any of these Holocaust memorials. I've only been to Yad Vashem, actually. I should come to see Yad Vashem is powerful, but it's not. I wouldn't put it in my top five. Yeah. So uh, so that's a lacuna in my uh, Jewish journey. But but at any rate, why aren't why don't we kind of stigmatize and not, not about the morality? Of, I think it was ultimately moral and it was sure. a good decision by Truman. But but ultimately, if we had more awareness, you've called for with with 
deadly seriousness, the resumption of tests. <laughs> no, nobody listens. <laughs> the resumptions of above ground. Rare. Rare and controlled and, and moderate, but to to bring to a visceral sense the notion of what we're playing with literal atomic fire. The two monuments that I would recommend above all others to uh, those lost in the Holocaust are maybe three. Okay, so the Berlin memorial i can't even explain it you know it's basically these stones these pillars and they start off very shallow you could have a picnic on one and you wander into this thing and the height just gets higher and higher and higher and it's mind-numbing and you lose all perspective as to where you are and you start to realize what happens when life is devalued and degraded and all you see is the cold austere stones it, it is who thought it, it reminds me of Bohemian Rhapsody? It made sense to Freddie Mercury to write this thing, but if you describe it, let's write a really long song that mimics several operas that makes no sense. Uh, the, I would never have greenlit this project because I'm an idiot, right? Mm -hmm. The next one is Baba Yar. Mm -hmm. uh, go to Kiev and try to keep yourself from feeling the sickness of standing near this ditch where people were just machine gunned and execute it it's a visceral thing that will cause you to lose your shit mm -hmm. and I guess the last one that really matters to me which isn't even about Jews is uh, there's a, an amazing sculpture of a boxing ring on an angle and it's to the Sinti which is sort of a, a Roma community mm -hmm. uh, boxing legend named uh, Johannes Trollman who was very popular in German circles as a great boxing legend. He sort of was using the Muhammad Ali technique of being highly athletic rather than just large and powerful. And he was very good looking, mm -hmm. swarthy complexion. And he fought in Germany and the Nazis took his, you know, there was a decision against him and the crowd was having none of it because they knew boxing. Mm -hmm. So the Germans, <laughs> The Nazis uh, were faced with the idea that this was not going down. And so they said, okay, we're going to change the rules to neutralize this guy's style. So he divorces his wife to save her life. I mean, I'm just, it's hard not to get emotional about this. He covers himself, his dark skin, with flour to mock the Aryan preoccupation with purity. And he loses. And this guy gets sent to a camp and they're, they're using him to train other people and put on exhibitions and finally they can't take it anymore and I think that they just I forget whether he got a hoe in the back of his head or a single bullet but it took us until recently to reinstate his boxing championship that was taken away from mm -hmm. him I'd go to those three memorials mm -hmm. see how you do but, you know, but my point getting, is it won't last the, 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 it'll wear off yeah, the, the well, human the, the if treadmill you've ever, of if you've ever had a, a near death experience for like two weeks yeah you're a every man. cup mm -hmm. of water is a, mm -hmm. you know when, when Warren Zevon was dying I think David Letterman asked him what, you know is there any message in this you know that you're about to die you've had this incredible uh, canon of songs that you've written and performed is there any lesson and Warren Zevon said enjoy every sandwich <laughs> And, you know, sandwich is a funny word, and it's a deadly serious point, which is you don't appreciate just the sheer joy of being alive because you can't. There's no way to keep these lessons in mind. We're not going to explode it above. I mean, it's the smart thing to do, right. but everyone's going to say, well, you're going to contaminate the atmosphere. It's like, right, And then you're going to get onto the next thing, and you're not going to think about it. And it, re it reminds me of in New Orleans when Katrina hit and the levee broke. And I remember somebody on TV saying, who could possibly imagine that the levee would break? And I thought, didn't Led Zeppelin Isn't sing a song, song called <laughs> and the levee breaks? It's what they do, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I don't understand it. But there, I've come to accept that most humans cannot live with abstract knowledge. If something hasn't happened in 20 years, it's not It's not going to happen. If it's never happened, then you never need to worry about anything that's a low probability, doesn't need to be thought about in the context of expected I think you're value. exactly right.